In this video, I am going to share with you a secret in, in my openings. So an opening that has got me so many wins uh, against the Sicilian. So uh, I wouldn't normally share my opening secrets, but I am desperate for subscribers. So please hit that subscribe button if you like, if you like what you're going to see. Now, let me uh, take you to the COPEX system. So COPEX system is an opening against a Sicilian, which uh, is a psychological weapon, basically. It's going to take your Sicilian opponent, who is comfortable with playing with Sicilian, into completely different areas, completely different play. And that is why the Copac is such a nice opponent, I mean, such a nice opening against the Sicilian. The Copac system is e4, c5, knight to f3, d6 is the main move of the Sicilian, right? And now we are going to play bishop to b3, bishop to d3. If you see here, there are very few games at the top level, but look at the win rate. It's 50 percentage. It's more than any other reply, actually, except for a3 and knight d4, which are very rare. So bishop d3. You might think, what is the point of this move? So whenever I play this move against my opponents, they always stop and think for a while. They are like slightly shocked. How could someone play a move like bishop d3? What is the point? Like you are putting the bishop in between two pawns where it is useless. So it's a very weird move for opponents who haven't seen the system before. So most opponents here have played g6 against me. I mean, other moves are also fine. Like for example, knight c6, knight f6 g6, e6, all these moves are fine. g6 is a very common way because now we're going to play c3. The whole idea of playing this bishop d3 is to play c3 and put the bishop on c2 and play d4. Do you see any similarity between this system, like for example, bishop g7, bishop c2, knight f6, castle, knight c6. Do you see any similarity between this queen side placement of pieces with any other opening. If you thought the rule of us, yeah, in rule of us, what do we do in the main line? We take out the bishop and when they play a4, we come back and then after c3, we play bishop c2. So the bishop takes a long route to c2, right? We are doing exactly that in the Sicilian, in the Copac, without bishop b5, basically. So if you look at this position after bishop d3, it might look very strange, but after a few moves, like knight c6, bishop, uh, pawn c3, pawn g6, so bishop c2, knight f6. This is very standard. It's like a rule opus. So the Sicilian player who was playing black would be like, I did not sign up for this. I, I wanted to play the Sicilian. This is not Sicilian. This is not what I want. So it's a very psychological weapon. It's not like you get a winning position out of the opening, but this opening takes the Sicilian player into rule opus territory, which they're not comfortable with. We can assume that because they have been playing Sicilian their whole life, right, generally. So Sicilian player wouldn't be happy with what has happened here. And that itself is enough to tilt them. So now after, let's say, uh, castles, you can play castles or h3. Both moves are fine here because h3 is useful because you don't want bishop g4, bishop takes. That kind of kills your d4 idea. It's very difficult to play d4 after that. So h3, bishop g7, and castles. So these moves can all be transposed, like black can play knight c6 or knight f6 or pawn g6 or pawn e6. It's up to black. But our plan remains the same. We play bishop d3, c3, bishop c2, and then castle, play h3, and then we play d4. So for example, black plays castles, we play d4. Now you see the position after tanks. Tanks. This looks very comfortable, right? We have the sender. Black cannot play d5 easily. Black cannot develop the bishop easily. It's slightly uncomfortable for black. Black. Most people would play a6 here. And then we can just play knight c3 and have a good game. So just to show you to show it to you again, if you go to the starting position, e4, c5, knight f3, d6, and here we throw our opening surprise. Bishop to d3. It will also gain some time on the clock for you when you play a tournament. Now, <clears throat> opponent can play knight f6 or knight c6 or g6 or e6. Let's say knight f6. 
and now we play pawn to c3. So bishop d3, pawn c3, and now let's say they play knight c6. We play bishop c2. They can play e6 or g6, doesn't matter. We play h3, right? You can play castles also, but h3 is slightly better because it's not bishop d4. Let's say they play bishop d7, castles. And when they castle, we play d4. And once you do this, we get a good position. Now, some of my opponents, actually, at least half of my opponents in this position went for knight to b4. Looks very tempting, right? Because it is attacking the bishop and I, the bishop is defending the pawn. If I want to keep my bishop, like in Royal Opus of Joko Piano, you want the bishop, light squared bishop to be there. I would have to play bishop b3. But if I go bishop b3, he will take my pawn. So do you know what is the correct move here? What I would do here? We play bishop b3. And opponent is again shocked. Why is he giving the pawn? Has he blundered? If you add a little bit of acting to bishop b3, like you play bishop b3 and then put it back, like don't remove the hand, just keep it on b3 and then put it back and then like act a little bit and then still play bishop b3. It will act like a mistake. And your opponent would take the pawn. And if they take the pawn, they lost. Winning move? Why to play and win? I'm surprised it is 50% win rate and 50% for black. But queen even outright wins here. Right? Because it's a it's a fork. The two knights get fork. You, you have to win this from here. Right? The best move that black can do is this, which would just be a piece down. Right? So that is why knight b4 is not really possible. I mean, it's possible, but we can just play bishop b3. And if they play, let's say, uh, what will they do here? If they want to save the uh, knight, let's say they go back. Or let's say they go queen b6. We can just develop now. Just develop and then we can play a3 and develop the bishop. And it's a great position. Right? So this is like a secret weapon against the Sicilian. And not many players know this. They do not know this particular system. Not many players at my level. My level is around 1500 per day. Uh, but even at slightly higher levels, people are not that familiar with this. right? So it's a very useful weapon against a Sicilian. And now I'm going to show you a tournament where I played this opening thrice in nine games. So one of my major weapons against opponents was this, against Sicilian was this. It was one of the reasons I won that tournament. So let me show you uh, one of the games, the openings where the openings of the games where this opening helped me, the Copex system helped me. So I was playing in this Goa tournament and I actually won that tournament. Uh, it was category C for so below 1600 players. And if you let me show you the games where I was able to win with the Copex. I'll just show you till the position where I got the advantage. So I got the Copex, I got to play the Copex in round four against Isha, who was 1407. So let me show you what happened. E4, C5, I was white, of course. Knight F3, D6, Bishop D3. Here she thought for a long time. Knight C6, C3. Pawn G6, Bishop C3. Bishop G7, H3. H3 is very important. Right? Knight F6, I castle. Castles, D4. Takes, takes. And here she played knight before. Many a player has fallen for this deception. Knight before and uh, it looks like the c2 bishop has to be exchanged. I cannot avoid it. But yeah, bishop b3. And she just went back. And now knight c3, e6, bishop g5. You can see all the pieces are coming out into good squares. And now queen d3. King h7. Defending that pawn. a3, b5, queen e2. I'm preparing rook d1, basically. Knight h5, bishop e3, bishop b7, rook d1. And now it's time to play e5. So this is the advantage of having the center. Like when you have two points in the center, you can push forward anytime. So e5, takes, takes. Knight a5. I moved the bishop. And here my opponent blundered. I mean, she played bishop takes knight. She wouldn't do that if she did not see she can take the pawn. Right? She thought after queen takes, she can take the pawn. But that's a big blunder. What happens next? Queen h5. I just win the piece. Thanks to my Kopec bishop. This is like the rule of a bishop or the Kopec bishop. Which goes to d3 and then awkwardly sits there and then comes to c2. Like waits there patiently. 
and I got the knight and I went on to win the game. And then in round, let me see, round seven, I got to play the op opening again. This time it did not go great because of the opening, but it was a good position after the opening. Let me show you. I was playing against Keshavan. 1 3 1 8, was a very tough player. Knight, I played knight f3, e6. This time he chose e6. Bishop d3 and g6. c3, bishop g7, bishop c2, and d5. So this is like the best way for black to deal with the coquette. The disadvantage of c3 is that black can get d5 easily. So this is one of this is actually the best way that black can play against a coquette. But those who are seeing it for the first time or not familiar with it will not go for this. Right, but if they go for it, we are still fine. It's still an equal position for white. We lose some of the advantage, but here you can see I got a good position. E5, D4, takes, takes, Bishop A4, Bishop D7, Knight A3, Knight C6, takes, takes, Knight C4, Knight H6, and Knight D6. So I got a good position, right? After King F8, I went on to win the game. I'll show you the tactic that uh, got me the win. This was a position. I was in a losing position actually. Because all black pieces are active. There's a battery over here. If I move my knight, queen g2 is coming. And my bishop is hanging. If I move my bishop, rook g2 is coming. So it's all bad. But here I played a very nice move. A move that Keshavan had missed. Can you find out what move I can play here? Why to play and win? You can pause the video and see. You can also post in the comments if you found out the winning move for white because it's a very tactical move. So see if you can find out. Spend some time, like one minute, two minutes and try to find out. And if you find it, just post it in the comments and I'll be very happy to see your comments. Rook takes e5. What is the idea? Of course, queen can't take. Pawn has to take. And now comes this sideways entry into the king side. Queen b4 check. King moves, queen e7 check, queen f7. But then there is the killing bishop f6. And now king, if king goes to g6, there is knight e5, you win the queen. And king h4, we take the queen and I won the game. So that was the game against Keshavan. Now I got one more chance to play the Kopec. That was in the last, uh, that was in the ninth round of the tournament. And that round was very important because it, it's the final stage of the tournament, right? So I'll show you the opening moves which got me the slight advantage. D sings, Bishop D3. I was playing a tough opponent because his rating was 1, 5, 1, 4, 2, 5. So <clears throat> let me take you till the position where I got the advantage. Bishop D3, A6. So here the opponent didn't play G6. He went for A6, B5, space, C3, Bishop G4. So this is slightly annoying because you can't get D4 if the knight is pinned, right? So Bishop moves. Knight moves, d3. So whenever opponent gets this pin, we have to slowly play d4. First d3 and then later we can play d4. Just like in the Royal Opus. That's again very similar to how we play the Royal Opus. Right? We play c3, d3 and then d4. Instead of directly playing it. So now e sings. I played h3, bishop back, castles. Bishop e7, rook e1, g5. So this is where the opponent uh, took the game into complicated territory. He shows his willingness to fight, like to go into chaos. And here I responded with g4, taking it into more complicated territory. Bishop g6, king g2, because he's going to play h5, right? So I got into slight problems, but this is nothing to do with the opening. The black player did the pin, that was good. And then he went into uncharted territory with g5. So I somehow was able to win this game. Let me show you the reminder of the game quickly. So h5, rook moves, king d7. So it's a very untraditional, non-traditional way of playing. Bishop e3, knight h6, knight h2, takes, takes, f6, knight d2, king. So basically he's castling queen side, manually castling queen side. d4, queen d7, knight c4, d5, knight back, takes, 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 f5, takes, takes. So around here, he has a good position. He, should, he played pawn takes. Now I took. So here it was a slight mistake. He should have played queen takes basically. He didn't play queen take because he was afraid of d5. Which is okay actually. It would have been still better. These pawns look good. Right? Knight g4, everything g4, f4. All good. But he took with the pawn. 
allowing me to take the pawn for three. That was his mistake. And now queen e6, I just play bishop d4. Rook moves, rook moves. Queen moves, queen blocks. And I have an advantage. And then I went on to win the end game. He went back, takes things. d4 defending everything. Rook comes in, rook comes in. g4, rook takes. f3, king g3. Takes, bishop e5. Check, knight g4. I want another pawn. And then this pawn is also going to fall. Bishop d4 and bishop d2, rook e5. Rook moves, king takes. Now all I will do is play a3, king e4 and push the f pawn. I took actually. Yeah, why not take? And then king e4 and f5. And here he resigned. And that's how I was able to win the game. So, <coughs> one second. So, do play this opening a lot. Like, see how it works. I'm, I can guarantee that this is going to give you a lot of good positions at least. And a lot of wins in your tournament games and in your practice games. So, uh, if you like what you saw, if you like the opening, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. I would be very happy to reply to it. And if you have any doubts in any of the lines, then please leave, the, leave a comment and I'll get back to you on the comment section. So, thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and like the video.